All right, perfect. Well, let's get started here. So thank you everyone for joining us today. This is Ask the Historians, and we are coming to you from Oak Park River Forest Museum. We have a very special guest here today for our presentation. Um, so um, I wanna thank you all for being here and um, we're thinking about lots of different uh, interesting people that have lived in our community of Park and River Forest throughout the years. So today we're highlighting one person in particular who um, many people still have not known that actually lived here at one point or another. Um, and our special guest today is going to be talking about the research that he's done to, to find out more about that story. So um, I want to just give another little introduction to our special presenter today, Jonathan Panton, who is a River Forest native, yes, and uh, a student at American University Washington School of Law. He's in um, or just finished his first year of law school. And today we're going to be talking about some research that he dove into um, looking at a question that has come up to us at the museum time and again. Um, some people have found throughout the years this interesting tidbit that Gerald Ford lived in Oak Park um, for a brief time uh, as, a, as a baby. And we've gotten this question once in a while, and some people have looked at a little bit of information of what they could find about um, such an interesting tie to the community. But Jonathan was able to really dive in and find so many different resources um, and, and talked to so many different um, libraries and, and people. And I've asked him to share his research here today. So that is what we will be doing. And I am going to pass this over to Jonathan. Well, thank you very much for the kind introduction, Rachel. Uh, I'm Jonathan Panton, and I will be presenting on Gerald Ford, Oak Park's first okay. president. Yeah, I got it. I think I hear it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Bob. Sorry. Uh, you may have to click on. Oh, there we go. Yep, okay. Uh, so, uh, starting off the research uh, methodology, as uh, Rachel was saying, I'm going to examine did President Gerald Ford live in Oak Park and where exactly uh, in the town did he live? Uh, well, <laughs> here's a picture of me and the official portrait of President Ford at the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, DC. Okay, uh, so first I'm gonna do a brief backstory on President Ford. Uh, so President Ford moved to Grand Rapids in 1916 uh, where he graduated from South High School. Uh, Gerald Ford became an Eagle Scout uh, from Troop 15 in 1927. He's pictured here in the center, uh, circled. Additionally, to the left, on the farthest to the left, was the governor of Michigan, who was present at uh, when Gerald Ford became an Eagle Scout. Uh, Gerald Ford is the only Eagle Scout to ever become president of the United States, and he regarded becoming an Eagle Scout as one of his proudest life accomplishments. Um, after graduating high school, he attended the University of Michigan where he studied economics and he played college football. Um, at the University of Michigan, Gerald Ford played center. Uh, while there, from, uh, he played on the 1932 and 1933 national championship teams. Uh, in 1934, Gerald Ford won the, the team's MVP. Uh, pictured here, uh, so we have Gerald Ford on the right, number 48. In the center, 
uh, of the picture, we have a man named Russell Fuag, his teammate. Interestingly enough, Russell Fuag actually became the superintendent of Oak Park River Forest High School from 1971 to 1973. Uh, here is a team photo of the 1934 University of Michigan football team, uh, which is when Gerald Ford won the MVP. Gerald Ford is pictured at the center uh, at number 48. Uh, Gerald Ford had uh, multiple offers to play in the NFL, but he turned them down to instead become a boxing coach and assistant football coach at Yale University. Uh, he worked there for a couple of years, and uh, then he went to law school at the University of Michigan Law School. However, Gerald Ford transferred to Yale Law School, where he graduated in 1941. Uh, after graduating, Jill, Gerald Ford started a law practice in Grand Rapids that he uh, managed for less than a year due to uh, Pearl Harbor. So uh, as I mentioned, Pearl Harbor was on December 7, 1941, and that launched the United States into World War II. Immediately after Pearl Harbor, Gerald Ford volunteered to fight in the United States Navy. Uh, Gerald Ford served on the USS Monterey in the Pacific Theater. Uh, that is pictured on the right, him on the Monterey. Uh, and the picture on the left is Gerald Ford uh, in the Navy, his official photo. Uh, while on the Monter Monterey, he fought in the battles of Leyte Gulf and Philippine Sea. Uh, another interesting piece to note is Gerald Ford was stationed at the Naval Reserve Training Command Center in Glenview, Illinois, uh, which was also where another U.S. president was stationed, President George H.W. Bush. Uh, so marriage and fatherhood. Uh, Gerald Ford married uh, Betty Bloomer. We all know as Betty Ford on October 15th, 1948, pictured on the left. Uh, then pictured on the right is the uh, Ford, is a Ford family picture. Uh, and in the bottom, we have Betty Ford and Gerald Ford. The top, we have uh, Susan Elizabeth, Stephen, Jack, uh, Michael Gerald, and Michael Gerald's wife, uh, Gail. Elected to the U.S. Congress. Uh, so Gerald Ford was elected as a Republican uh, to the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, representing Michigan's 5th Congressional District. Uh, that Congressional District encompassed his home of Grand Rapids. And Gerald Ford ran on the platform of combating isolationism because he was a staunch believer that the United States should have a role on the international stage. Uh, while in Congress, uh, Gerald Ford served from 1949 until 1973. Uh, he's most famous for serving on the Warren Commission, which investigated the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. In fact, he was actually the last member of the Warren Commission to pass away. Uh, also, uh, Gerald Ford was the House Minority Leader from 1965 to 1973. So that meant uh, the Republican Party was in the minority in the House and Gerald Ford was the leader of the House Republicans. Uh, ascension to the vice presidency. Essentially, uh, President Richard Nixon had a vice president named Spiro Agnew uh, who had to resign due to tax evasion, due to pleading guilty to tax evasion. So President Richard Nixon had to replace the vacancy uh, to have a new vice president. Gerald Ford was seen as the only pick uh, who would get wide bipartisan support. Uh, which was proven to be accurate because the US president voted to confirm him uh, 92 to three and the house voted to confirm him 387 to 35. So Gerald Ford was sworn in to be vice president on December 6th, 1973, despite him not being elected to the vice presidency. Uh, president Gerald Ford, uh, well, as, as many people know, uh, 
what brought down the Nixon presidency was the Watergate scandal. And so President Nixon resigned uh, uh, at noon on August 9th, 1974, which made Gerald Ford the 38th president of the United States. At Gerald Ford's oath of office, he famously declared, my fellow Americans, our long national nightmare is over. With that, Gerald Ford became the only US president to become president who was neither elected to the vice presidency or the presidency. Uh, going into Gerald Ford's presidency, he's most well known for pardoning Richard Nixon. Uh, Gerald Ford believed that the Watergate scandal was distracting uh, the nation from critical issues such as stagflation and an energy crisis. So America needed to heal. Uh, Gerald Ford's decision was poorly received at the time and is widely considered to be the reason why he ultimately lost the 1976 presidential election. Uh, while President Gerald Ford continued to taunt with the Soviet Union, he also encouraged personal saving habits with whip inflation now to combat the stagflation of the 1970s. And uh, Gerald Ford described his, himself as a Ford, not a Lincoln. Uh, so the 1976 presidential election was one of the closest races in American history. It had President Gerald Ford go up against Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter. Ultimately, Governor Carter won the election with 297 electoral votes to Gerald Ford's 240, which made Jimmy Carter the 39th president. Uh, and Gerald Ford has recently been ranked as the 28th best president of the United States. Post-presidency. Uh, in 1980, Gerald Ford was actually considered to be the running mate of Ronald Reagan up to the uh, 1980 Republican convention. Ultimately, Reagan selected George H.W. Bush because there was a fear that choosing Gerald Ford to be his running mate would make Reagan not look like a great leader since he, had a, he would have an ex-president as the vice president. Uh, the Gerald Ford Presidential Museum opened up in 1981, and that museum was very vital in making this presentation possible, by the way. Additionally, in 2001, Gerald Ford became the highest ranking Republican to fully embrace equality uh, for the LGBT community. Uh, and sadly, President Ford died on December 26, 2006. He was 93 years old. And at the time of his death, he was the longest living US president. Sadly, uh, the Gerald Ford people remember is not the one they should. Uh, most people either remember Gerald Ford only as the president who pardoned Richard Nixon, or they remember Gerald Ford for Chevy Chase's saturation of him on Saturday Night Live, or they remember Gerald Ford for stumbling down the stairs from Air Force One on two occasions. So uh, now I'm gonna go into Gerald Ford's genealogy uh, and really dive into his background. So Gerald Ford's mother was named Dorothy Ayer Gardner. Uh, she was born in 1892 in Harvard, Illinois. Um, as I'll, I'll explain later, uh, so she was originally married to uh, Gerald Ford's father, birth father, Leslie Lynch King Sr., but after she divorced him, she married a paint salesman in Grand Rapids named Gerald R. Ford. Um, they had three children together, Thomas, Richard, and James. So all three of those children were Gerald Ford's half-brothers. Additionally, uh, we'll be examining uh, Gerald Ford's Aunt Tennessee Ayer Gardner, commonly known as Aunt Taggy. Uh, she was also born in Harvard, Illinois, uh, and she married Clarence Haskin James and had two children, 
uh, Gardner James and Adele Elizabeth James. They were Gerald Ford's family who lived in Oak Park. Uh, this is the uh, register of marriages for Aunt Taggy and Clarence that I found. Uh, here is the 1920 census for uh, Clarence, Aunt Taggy, Adele Elizabeth, and Gardner James, uh, showing that they lived at 410 North Humphrey. Uh, now, I'm going to quickly talk about uh, Gerald Ford's family on his father's side. Uh, Gerald Ford's biological father was Leslie Lynch King Sr. Uh, he, was, he was born in uh, Nebraska. Uh, and as I'll explain later, he, him and Gerald Ford's mother, Dorothy Air Gardner, divorced. And after the divorce, he remarried and had two children. So that would be Gerald Ford's half-sister, Marjorie, and his half-brother, Bud. Um, King later lived in Wyoming, and he died in 1941 in Arizona. Sorry. Um, so this, uh, so Leslie Lynch King Jr. was born July 14th, 1913 in Omaha, Nebraska. But wait. I thought this presentation was on Gerald Ford. Who's Leslie Lynch King Jr.? Well, Gerald Ford's time in Omaha was very dysfunctional. His father, Leslie Lynch King Sr., was abusive to Dorothy uh, and even baby Leslie Lynch King Jr., or commonly known as Gerald Ford. Uh, he was an alcoholic. And there was even an occasion where he threatened to kill both of them with a knife. Uh, at this point, Dorothy made the conscious decision to leave her home, leave her marriage in Omaha, and go to Oak Park to be with her sister. So one quick story um, about Leslie Lynch King Sr. Uh, so after Gerald Ford and his mother left, uh, Gerald Ford had no interactions with his father whatsoever. In fact, Gerald Ford did not even know that Leslie Lynch King was his father. He thought his father was Gerald Ford. Uh, when Gerald Ford was at South High, he had a job where he worked at a cash register at a uh, Greek-owned diner uh, Monday through Friday in, uh, during lunch. One day, a gentleman drove up in a brand new Lincoln, walked in and stared at Ford. He walked up and asked, is your name Leslie King? And Gerald Ford had no idea what this man was talking about, but this man broke the news. My name is Leslie Lynch King. Your name is Leslie Lynch King Jr. I'm your father. And uh, at that point, Gerald Ford found out that he was actually adopted and didn't because he, he had no idea. Um, Gerald Ford really didn't want to have much to do with his father due to him being an abusive man and the fact that he did not pay any child support uh, to his mother. Um, there was one occasion where Ford ended up seeing his father uh, when he worked a summer job as a park ranger at Yellowstone. But other than that, Leslie Lynch King had nothing to do with Gerald Ford's life. So going back to uh, uh, Dorothy, Dorothy's move to Oak Park. Uh, so she moved, so she left her husband with 16 day old Leslie Lynch King Jr. at the time, later known as Gerald Ford, uh, to move to her sister's house uh, at 410 North Humphrey. What we know about in Oak Park well, so we know that Gerald Ford and Dorothy moved Oak Park in July 1913. We, uh, we found a baby book that lists Gerald Ford's first train ride being to Chicago on July 20th, 1913. Uh, also in this baby book, we found that at three weeks old, Gerald Ford was visited by three women who brought him flowers. Uh, uh, then we know that Gerald Ford and his mother 
left Oak Park and they moved to Grand Rapids in late 1913. Grand Rapids, as many of you all know, is the home, home that most people associate with Gerald Ford. Uh, however, we do know from photographic evidence that Gerald Ford visited his Aunt Taggy's home in Oak Park on multiple occasions after he left uh, Oak Park as a baby. So here is the uh, aforementioned uh, baby book. Uh, to the left, it describes the train ride uh, to Chicago. And on the right, it describes how, uh, uh, how women brought the baby flowers. Uh, so this picture uh, has uh, Gerald Ford right in the center eating watermelon. Uh, it also has uh, his half-brother Tom Ford, uh, Grandma James, and many others having watermelon uh, in Oak Park in 1922. So this would have been when Gerald Ford was nine years old. Uh, and one thing to note is uh, I can't thank the uh, uh, the Gerald Ford Museum enough for providing me with all these photos of Gerald Ford after he moved. Uh, in this photo, we have uh, Gerald Ford seated to the right uh, with his cousins, uh, Gardner James, who uh, we mentioned was one of his two cousins who lived in Oak Park and his half brother, Tom Ford, uh, sitting on an Oak Park lawn in 1924. So that would have been when Gerald Ford was 11 years old. On uh, this picture, we have Gerald Ford uh, to the left. Uh, we have uh, his half brother, Tom Ford, his cousins, Gardner and, uh, Gardner and Adele James, who are the Oak Park cousins, uh, having watermelon in Oak Park in 1922. So when Ford was nine, uh, in this photo, we have uh, Jerry Ford uh, at the left, uh, Gardner uh, and Adele James uh, in front of the 410 North Humphrey House, uh, which, is, which was their family home in Oak Park uh, in 1921, when Ford would have been eight years old. Uh, here's another, uh, another picture of uh, those four uh, in front of the 410 North Humphrey House when uh, Ford was eight. So, okay, uh, so the home is still standing to this day. Uh, the, James, the James's address was 410 North Humphrey Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois. Uh, the home was built in 1913 uh, and the family, so the home was owned by Clarence, and Aunt Taggy until 1946. At that time, they sold the home to their daughter, uh, Elizabeth Joyce James, Adele Elizabeth Joyce James, who owned the home until her death in 1996. So it's pretty remarkable that uh, Gerald Ford's family owned this Oak Park home for 83 years. Uh, well, I think our takeaways about Gerald Ford should not be Saturday Night Live or Gerald Ford stumbling down the stairs, but rather that Gerald Ford restored honor and decency after the Watergate scandal crushed public confidence in our government. In fact, Gerald Ford's successor, President Jimmy Carter, recognized this. He said at his inauguration, for myself and for our nation, I want to thank my predecessor for all that he has done to heal our land. And just for a sliver of time, we could call Gerald Ford an Oak Parker. Uh, that being said, I would like to thank uh, the Oak Park Museum uh, for offering this talk. I would like to thank the Gerald Ford Museum for their research help. I would like to thank the Joyce family for their insight on the history of the home. I would like to thank the homeowners, uh, the Dolan family, and I would like to thank everyone who listened to this presentation. Thank you. Fantastic. So if you all on the call have any questions that you wanna to add to the chat box, feel free to do that. Um, 
I think I have some questions as well. And you answered one of my questions, which was I wanted to ask your perspective, um, first of all, especially um, as a law student, especially like what are some things that we can take away from Gerald Ford's time as president? You know, what sort of wrap up do we have to make his story more than just um, a very passing amount of time as president? So um, you sort of you sort of gave that to me to really restore um, some dignity after such a tumultuous um, former presidency. Mm -hmm. But um, my second question is, I'd like to ask you if you know any more about how Aunt Taggy um, and how that family came to Oak Park in the first place. Do you have any indication of why they would have moved to this area if they were born in, you said? In Harvard. Yeah. Well, I do know that uh, Aunt Taggy's husband, Clarence, was a uh, machine salesman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't know the specifics on why they, why they moved, but I would imagine that due to uh, Oak Park's proximity to Chicago mm -hmm. and Chicago being a booming city at the time, it would, it would make sense that someone who wanted to uh, sell those types of goods would want to be near uh, a city like Chicago. Absolutely. And a great place to raise a family, as we all know. Absolutely. Uh, looks like we have a couple questions in the chat. Um, yeah, so let me ask you this. Um, do you see any parallels between the Biden and the Ford presidencies? Well, that is an interesting question because both presidencies involve uh, topic involve economic turmoil as well as energy crisis crises. Um, the with Gerald Ford, his presidency more or less inherited uh, an energy crisis at the end of Nixon's term and uh, stagflation as well. Uh, so you can certainly argue that uh, in terms of uh, in terms of foreign policy, there wasn't really like a an ongoing war that occurred during Gerald Ford's presidency, but rather he made a point of trying to ease relations uh, with the Soviets. He mm -hmm. uh, tried to do the Salt II agreement, uh, which led to a lot of the deep, prolifer deep proliferation of ICBMs. Uh, that agreement was ultimately signed under President Carter, but it uh, did start with President Ford's negotiations with Leonid Brezhnev at the time. So I, I guess you could say on the international stage, relations were probably better uh, with the United States and the Soviet Union than they may be with the United States and Russia today. That's really interesting to think about, especially with um, uh, some similar some similar countries um, having to do with each other. So um, very interesting. Thank you for that question. Thank you. And there's one more that I'd like to ask. I think we have time for one more question. So um, when his father visited Gerald, he asked if he was Leslie. Uh, so when did he start going by Gerald Ford and why? That's a good question. Uh, so uh, Leslie Lynch King Jr. became Gerald Ford when uh, his mother married uh, Gerald Rudolph Ford in 1916. So that would have been when Gerald Ford, as we know him, was three years old. However, uh, he did not legally change his name until... Uh, until he was 22 years old in 1935. Wow, that's incredible. And, and I want to thank you too, because you really did a good job of laying out this very complicated family history of all of these different people involved in various places and times. So I think you've made a lot of sense of that family history for us today, and I thank you. Well, thank you, Rachel. And, and thank you for all your good research, especially, like I said, diving in um, with all of the different resources that you've been able to find and um, all of the people that you've talked to to make this story more put together. 
So um, with that being said, I want to thank everybody else for being on the call today. Thank you all for being here and um, for joining and watching. So I will look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.